Hi, in the last video, I introduced what is full shell technique and how to generate a full volume texture in Houdini. And today in this one, let's take a look how to make the full shell geometry. Let's start it. First thing we need to create a geometry node. Inside node, create a test geometry. We, here we use the rubber toy as example. Let me share here. Uh, we need to do two things here. One is duplicate this geometry itself as a shell. We need to duplicate it multiple uh, times. It depends how many layer we want. We want more layer, we just duplicate more time. But before doing that, we need to prepare the second UV for the uh, for the full volume texture. So here we can take a look at the UV channel. In here we just select the uh, UV viewport. Here you can see this is the first UV automatically generated. I would like to explain a little bit before I start to generate the second UV. So in this case you can see each polygon have a full vertex. So jump to the geometry spreadsheet. You can see uh, in the vertex we have uh, 00010203 then jump to the 10111213. So the first uh, number in this index is uh, uh, primitive. It's a primitive number like here. Uh, each primitive is a polygon. So, for example, the zero uh, index zero primitive point to these four vertex. These four vertex make make this polygon. They connect it together as a polygon. So, what I want to do is remap each polygon to the uh, zero one UV space. So what I want to do is uh, the first uh, vertex will be in the zero zero, and the second will be the zero one. Then it should be one one. Then it should be one zero here. So to do that, we need to generate by the vertex wrangler. So here the first function we need is get the index of the vertex. So what we want to get is inside the vertex we want to get the second index for each primitive. So this is a repeat from 0 to 3, 0 to 3, 0 to 3. So to get that we need a function uh, Vertex print index. So the first thing or zero. Then I use the uh, the keyboard VTX number for the vertex number, the current vertex number, and it will feed back to me which index for the current vertex. Then we'll use this 0, 1, 2, 3 index to, to generate the second UV coordinate. So what I'm doing here is that if it is a 0, it will be located 0, 0. If the 1 will be located in the 0, 1. And if the 2 will be located 1, 1. And if the 3 it will be located uh, 1, 0. Fill off the fill all of this uh, UV space from 0 to 1. Th then the texture, the full volume texture will tie in based on that. So there are a lot of, I think there are a lot of ways to do that. What I figure out is the formula is here. Uh, you probably can use a different one. This is what I thought it worked pretty well. So we need to create the variable for the UV2 and we set a UV2 So basically uh, 
the first number, the x number, it just based on the index, if the index more than one or not. So the will feel bad booting. If the false, it will be a, a zero. If the true, it will be one. So when the number is bigger than one, like uh, number two and number three, definitely x axis will be one. So this is what I want because of the zero, one, two, three. So two and three is index bigger than one. So there will be x will be one. So this is what I want because x zero is here, one is on the right side. So the y is uh, it's almost same thing. It just uh, uh, sub subtracted 1.5 then we get an absolute number then if equal 0 0.5 it will be 1 if not equal there will be 0 so only number 1 and the number 2 uh, will equal 0 0.5 so 1 subtract 1.5 is minus 0 0.5 but abs absolute will be 0 0.5 and the 2 Subscribe 1.5, the minor 1.5, that would be 0 0.5. So I just use this simple formula to get this result. So here you can see we have the second UV information. I'm pretty sure they have other way to do that, probably better than this. Uh, but here is what I figure out. Okay, so uh, let's continue. Back to the perspective view. And here, what we need to do uh, is create a normal. I think there's no normal information uh, in the vertex. Let me take a look. We have a normal. Oh, right now, oh, we already have a normal. So if you don't have normal, you can create it here. So actually, normal is not necessary, but I just leave it there. So then the next thing you need to do is uh, use the copy. Copy and the transform. So before doing that, you need to make sure you have a normal. Because we will use the normal as direction to extend the shell geometry. But actually, we not extend here. But if you want to review it, we will use the normal to extend it. After we duplicate the geometry as a shell, by default, we will not extend it. We will not pre-extend it. You could pre-extend it, export it, but that means you cannot change it in the game. So what we want to do is we want to change the length of the fur. So the next thing we need to do is transfer the attribute copy number from primitive to the point. The uh, reason to do that is because uh, the scale uh, operation will happen in the point uh, level. So we need to use uh, attribute promote. Actually, we need a two attribute promote first one we will transfer from primitives to the point a copy number so now if we do that check in the spreadsheet we will see it's copy to the point copy number and the second thing we need to copy is normal because right now normal in the vertex uh, we want all covered in the point uh, in the point is better than vertex is number of the point is less than vertex so the calculation is faster than vertex if not necessary in the vertex level it just use point it's uh, my opinion so normal from the vertex to the point so okay it's right now in the point okay the next thing we need to create attribute no, sorry, it's point wrangler. We need to copy the face right now. So change the position. Offset by the normal. 
multiply the attribute copy number. Oh yeah. So yes. It's scaled. But it's too big. So to make that easy to control, uh, we can do is create the non node. We call them control. And then we can uh, just uh, create primitive interface to give some uh, one is yes. so we can do uh, some control here create the integer for the how many we want how many layer or shell layer we want duplicate from the original geometry and also the float for the scale how much scale we want so it will be very useful when we want to change the size so we call that scale also okay so let me see why layer number or oh, layer count whatever we can set up the range maximum 64 and like that and scale you can scale uh, I don't want to scale too much or oh, probably uh, 5 Okay, so then we connect uh, this parameter together. Here uh, we can control the number here. So uh, can use the channel. Right now, the number is one because in the controller here, right now the layer is. Oh, I think a better change that the match the range here. So the minimum it should be one. The maximum is uh, probably sixty-five. I have sixty-four copy there. I'll probably just sixty-four because this geometry what we export it just for layer. So we will we we need to separate the we better separate the uh, base geometry and the layer shell. So this just for the layer shell. Here is uh, if we oh you see too much. Just back to one, and here the scale. We need to go to the Wrangler and. Uh, We need to multiply another channel. It's called uh, we use a float set channel float and same thing control. Uh, it's called scale. Yeah. Scale. Yeah, that should work. So if scale is zero, we will see it. If, oops, and yeah, that'll work. So when you scale more, you will see the go out. We probably need to reduce the number a little bit. The range, I think, of maximum to the one is enough. So they give easier control here. Yeah, more smooth control here. Yeah. Okay, so right now we just uh, duplicate 32. 
layer it's a lot actually for the game you need around 10 is enough i think uh if not too long for 16 is have a good enough quality if you have when you have more of this one thing is cost more memory because you know the second you we every uh, primitive is separated so it will cost more memory than connected primitive and also have a more layer uh, for each pixel the GPU need to render the overdraw it will be more overdraw on each pixel but here just for example just two examples i put a 32 but actually you know 16 under 16 is enough usually i put eight we can export the different uh, size uh, to the engine to take a look what different between them so here the next thing we need to do we need to get the maximum copy to calculate uh, the gradient for the each layer. So here I need to create an integer max copy equal the channel integer from uh, from the copy number from copy one. So here get the copy one and see why. You also can get the integer from a controller, but here I get it from a copy one is same number because the reference to the controller. Okay, so in the spreadsheet you can see we have a maximum copy, so this eight. If we change this number uh, to the thirty-two, back to here, we'll see the maximum number thirty-two. So the reason why doing that is. Um, you can pre actually you can pre scale the object like here you can uh, pre scale it for some size but i would like to keep some uh, flexibility when you do the game so if you can change the four lens in the shader or material in in the game engine it will be better because different uh, object probably you need different lens of the four but how the material know which layer should be about other layer it should have some older information so i would like to store this older information the layer older information in the vertex alpha or vertex color uh, in this case in this uh, tutorial i put in the alpha channel so you still can use the vertex color channel for something else for example the full map control uh, the direction of the surface actually full map only need a vector to two flow information so you can use R channel and green channel in the works color for the full map and you can use blue channel for something else for example the density of the four or the length information of the four it depends your application so here I just uh, doing the alpha uh, channel um, so I will now pre-create the offset for each layer. So what I would like to do is uh, keep this zero. Then I will calculate. I would use the uh, the number copy number to divide the maximum number. Then put that number to the vertex uh, alpha for the each layer. So the, and in the material in the sh in the game engine. I can get this uh, vertex alpha information and in the material I can control how uh, far I want offset and I use this uh, gradient information to order the layer make them in the correct order so to do that we can use a point wrangler to do it but here I would like to uh, show you how to do it in the Point warp. Here we back to the spreadsheet. We can see in the point we have the copy number and maximum copy. So it's easy here. 
I just uh, need to find the attribute copy number. I just duplicated this one and call is max copy. So get the max number of copy we copied and divide them. one second one and what we divide that you can just uh, output that to the alpha output to the alpha we need to use a band export Here is the thing. I would like to uh, offset this number in the alpha. The copy number start from zero, and most close to the base geometry it will start from zero. So that means when you when you review the shell effect here, you will not see the other layer. You only see the last one because the last one they have a biggest number of the copy number actually is the equal uh, like a 31 so 31 divided by 32 almost one so that surface is opaque you cannot see other layer back to here in the thing what you can see is uh, you see when you do the scale you can see other layer you can do the debug so over here just a layer is better so you, it's really hard to debug the last layer is almost opaque you can see a little very subtle so for easy to debug so here you can use a fit one this one is the most uh, easy one so you can set up uh, the output invert it yeah so more close the shell, more close to the base, the more opaque. So that's easy to debug. To see the all four shell in the review. We also can use uh, other way to invert, use the subtract. We can just uh, create the constants to use the one minus the value you have. We will get the same result. We need to set up one first. Yeah, this is exactly the same. So either way is good. Depends what you prefer. Go back to the geometry. So now if I'm uh, change more, I will see oops, inside, outside. Yeah. For export, I will keep it zero. So the next thing uh, we need to do, here some uh, cross face here. So the next thing we need to do is uh, transfer back alpha and normal to the vertex because the vertex there should be keep the vertex color information and the vertex alpha information in the vertex level. So we need an uh, attribute uh, promote. From the point to the vertex, what we need to do is the alpha channel and also the normal. That would look better here. The last node we need to create is export the FBX file. Oops. Okay. Sorry for that. FBX output. I just need to put the file name and export the current frame. Then we will export the geometry. I will export two different layer. One is eight. One is thirty-two. Then import to the engine to take a look what difference between them. 
In the next video, I will import the full geometry and the volume texture in the Unreal and the Unity. Also, we will create a full shader. Okay, see you in the next one.